Is it easy to make a good A to D converter? This question comes from Mark in Exeter, United Kingdom. Hey Paul, in electronics, it's generally harder to make a good analog to digital converter uh, than it, it is to make a good digital to analog converter, uh, a DAC. Did I say that right? <laughs> Does the same apply in high-end audio? You clearly make extraordinary efforts to create transparent and accurate DACs. Yes, we do. What does this tell us about the active loudspeakers that use DSP to implement crossovers and equalizers? Could we ever live with those ADCs in a high-end system? Thanks, Mark. Well, they are very different the way that we would make an ADC as opposed to a DAC. So let me explain what these, what these things are. An analog to digital converter is well, just what it sounds like. You're taking an analog signal, say out of a turntable or a microphone, and you're converting it into digital audio. And a DAC is the opposite. We take a digital audio signal and we reconvert it back to analog. So in order for us to hear anything, we need an ADC and we need a DAC. And most of us have DACs or DACs. And this company is founded on building DACs and the things that DACs use like power amps and preamps to um, support our love of music. We also make an ADC converter called the New Wave Phono Converter. It's one of the products that we've made and they are very different disciplines and generally audio companies don't make ADCs because there's not a whole lot of use for it. Now, we made one, as I said, the NPC, the New Wave Phono Converter, and that is a great little DAC, or <clears throat> sorry, ADC. And we did it because we wanted to be able to have a way for customers to memorialize and capture their vinyl records onto a hard drive. So the original idea was, imagine if we could have a perfect analog to digital converter hooked up to your turntable, that would mean that no longer do you have to go through the ritual of hauling it off, washing the record, putting it on, and then finally sitting down and listening to it. You could have your entire library of vinyl available at the touch of your iPad. And a lot of people do that. Well, several thousand, because we've sold several thousand of those. And it's actually pretty easy to make an ADC that's capable of perfectly capturing a turntable because turntables have rather limited dynamic range or at their best, they're 70 dB. They, they do have a full range of frequency, but it doesn't extend out into the ultrasonic or into the uh, infrasonic. So you've pretty much all you got to do is cover 18 hertz or so I like to get the rumble in there because that gives it more the feel that you're actually listening to a turntable. So let, let's, let's call it down to two or three hertz and you want to go up to say 30 kilohertz so that we don't get any kind of phase shift in that. That's easy. That's pretty easy to do in an ADC. The tougher parts of ADCs are when we're trying to capture something like a full range of a microphone or a electronic instrument to where we want to get what's really possible in high-end audio, which is dynamics that border on 120 dB, which is what, what is that, 50 dB greater than what a record has, nearly double, and it, this is on a log scale, so that's, that's amazing noise levels that go down into the ether where you can't hear any kind of noise. Those are the things that become harder. And there are many off-the-shelf chip solutions that engineers can take. Analog Devices makes them. Burr Brown makes them. There's a, a number of Cirrus Logic. I think these companies may have combined themselves. But yeah, they're, it's not all that difficult with the kind of chips that are available today. And you just need some good engineering, some good power supply. A, a, a good input stage is really important, keeping the levels right. But no, it's not terribly difficult. And 
when it comes to loudspeakers, there we have a whole different situation. So what he's asking about is the DSP with loudspeakers. And in order to do DSP on loudspeakers, if you have the output of your analog power amplifier, which we do, and you're going to feed that into your speaker, and that speaker is DSP'd, digital signal processed, that means I'm going to have to take the output of my power amplifier, analog, convert it to digital, do my magic in DSP, and then re-do it back into analog after all that's been done. So you have this in and out process that's in addition to any kind of in and out digital process that came before. And that gets increasingly difficult to make it sound correct. And I don't know of any full DSP speaker system that I would actually have in my home. I know they exist. I haven't heard them all. What I think at the moment is the best thing that people do with DSP, which is what we will be doing with DSP in our new speaker line, is in the lower frequencies. So where you really need DSP, in my opinion, is at the low frequencies, because those are the ones that are very problematic in rooms. So we'll have one that maybe goes from, say, 500 hertz down to 20 hertz, and we'll DSP that. That's a pretty easy thing to do. But once we get into that 20 kilohertz regions with very sensitive tweeters, phase shifts, and all the stuff that you have to deal with, it gets very tricky to build a transparent sounding speaker system using A to D, D to A, and I don't think it's the problem of the processes, it's just the extra conversions and then back. Every time you do it, you're gonna lose a little something. So, maybe a convoluted answer, but it's what you get. <laughs> hey, the price is right. <laughs> All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.